All right. I've been requested uh, to make this video. Um, this is question 131. Of course, I'll put that at the beginning of the video uh, from the SOA exam P practice problems. Um, here are the details. Uh, we have two random variables, uh, N1 and N2. Okay. Uh, N1 is the number of claims submitted in April. Uh, N2 is the number of claims submitted in May. And they give me the joint PMF. The joint PMF. We're asked to find, uh, we want to know uh, what is the expected number of claims submitted in May given uh, that the number of claims submitted in April is two. So that's what we want to find, okay? A couple of things I want to say before I do that. Uh, first thing is that this joint PMF looks quite complicated and annoying. You want to <laughs> be, you want to have enough practice with these types of problems that you recognize that you need to apply some sort of trick. Okay, I'm gonna do this the long way, but I'm gonna point out there's a much faster way to do it uh, as I go. Okay, um, I'm also going to uh, check, check above, I, I will tag a video uh, showing why what I'm gonna do is true. Okay, it's related to the derivative of a converging geometric series. Okay, so uh, let me just get right to it. I'm just going to use the definition. The definition, just always go back to the definition. If you get confused on a problem, just, just start writing out the definition. Right, that will hopefully lead you somewhere. So what I mean is this. We're after, we're after um, the expected uh, number of claims uh, filed in May, right? We're after this. A conditional expectation, uh, given n1 is equal to 2. Um, so I'm going to write down the definition. What is the definition of this? This is the sum. Okay, I need to sum over all of the n2, over all of the n2. What are my n2s? My n2s are going from 1 to infinity. 1 to infinity. Okay, what's going to be the sum and? Well, this is the expectation, so I need to throw an n2 here. So n2 times um, the conditional PMF. The conditional PMF. The probability PMF. Uh, just a function, uh, n2 given n1 is equal to 2, okay, and I can write down here the argument here, uh, n2 given n1 is equal to 2. This is what I need to end up computing, and we need to be quite familiar with this piece, obviously. Again, this is just the definition. This right here is the definition of this. This is the definition of a, a conditional expectation. So uh, let me see what I can do. I need to start out by finding this. And I claim basically that once you find this, if you are familiar enough with this material, you'll know what the answer is immediately. If not, I'll show you how to do it otherwise. It's still doable, okay? but it will save you some time. So uh, this piece right here, the joint uh, PMF, uh, is as follows. Just use the definition, okay, so the probability uh, that n2 given uh, n1 is equal to 2, n2 given n1 is equal to 2, by definition is equal to the following. It's the joint PMF, which I don't have, divided by the marginal PMF. So this is equal to uh, the probability that n1 is equal to 2, and n2 is equal to some n2. I'll end up having to sum up over those, uh, divided by the probability uh, that n1 is equal to 2. All right, so let's um, find this. Let's find this uh, all as 1. Let me show you what I mean. <coughs> all right, so this is equal to, uh, let's deal with up top first. So I have my joint PMF given up top. So this is equal to uh, 3 fourths. Okay, and if you want, uh, let's just bring it together actually, because this, this is actually 3 sixteenths. You don't have to do this, but just to make it look a little cleaner. Uh, e to the negative 2, right, because n1 is equal to 2, okay, times 1 minus e to the negative 2 raised to the n2 minus 1, okay, divided by, now I need to find the, this is the marginal, the marginal PMF 
okay, evaluated at two for n1. So I need to sum up over all of the n2s while keeping n1 equal to two. Again, I need to sum up over all of the uh, n2s while keeping n1 equal to two. So I take the joint PMF above, replace n1 with two, and sum up over the n2s. So this again actually is going to be three over 16, uh, e to the negative two, one minus e to the negative two, to the n two minus one. Again, let me just point out, um, so I'm obviously gonna need more room. This is just the definition. I'm just using the definition, right? It's, it's of this, right? These, so these are equal, right? It's just the definition. You have to be very familiar with the definition. So um, first of all, notice that um, these cancel, those cancel. So let me give myself some more room, okay? And we'll finish the computation. All right, uh, let's come up here. Okay, so I pretty much uh, have uh, the conditional probability mass function, and um, let me just simplify it a bit, because what we're saying here is the following, uh, the probability uh, of n2 given n1 equals 2, n2 given n1 is 2, is this piece, uh, this piece. But look at what I have here. You need to recognize this. And you may not. If you don't, it's no big deal, actually. You just compute this. Again, I'm going to make a, a, a next video, and I'll tag it in this one. You have to know about geometric sums. This right here is geometric. This is a geometric sum. You need to be able to recognize this. So if it's a geometric sum, what is P? Well, what is the common ratio? The common ratio is this. What is the first term? This is the first term. A geometric sum always converges to the first term over one minus the common ratio. This is equal to the first term over the one, one minus the common ratio. One minus the common ratio. What does that equal? That equals one. This whole piece in the denominator is one. This is equal to one. Now we already canceled these two, so what am I left with? This is my joint PMF. This is equal to e to the negative 2, 1 minus e to the negative 2, n2 minus 1. This is all the joint PMF is. Let me just reiterate, the denominator is 1. Geometric series converges to 1, as shown here. The first term over 1 minus common ratio. The numerator is exactly this, so that's what I left with, 3, 6, 3, or 16 cancels. So I have this. This is my joint PMF. We're pretty much there. Let me show you what I mean. Let me write back down uh, the definition of what we're looking for. So, what do we have now? What we have now is the following uh, information. So, again, we're looking for the expected value uh, of n2 given n1 is equal to 2, and this is equal to the sum. We need to sum over the n2s, 1 to infinity. Uh, since we're looking for expected value, I need to throw in the n2 back in the sum and times the joint PMF, which is this business. Uh, e to the negative two, one minus E to the negative two, N two minus one. At this stage, if you're familiar enough with your common, uh, commonly known distributions, you'll know what to do. You're done. Why is that? Why is that? Um, this right here, this right here is the following. This is the probability mass function for a geometric distribution with p equals e to the negative 2. This right here is distributed, distributed geometric with p equals e to the negative 2. That's just this piece. But then wait a minute, what am I doing here? I mean, Again, I mean, there's, just, there's a lot I can say about this, but specifically, there's two types of geometric random variables. There's this one, where I'm looking at the number of trials before the first success, that's this one. There's also the number of failures for the first success. SOI doesn't test on that one as much, 
as far as I know. I haven't seen a lot of problems regarding that, just in the practice. Um, this is geo, P equals e to the negative 2. But what happens when I throw an N2 here? This is the random variable, right? This is the random variable, uh, N2. This is the expected value. This whole piece, this whole piece is um, the following. Let me, let me just be a little bit more clear here. What I'm saying here is that uh, this. I'm saying that N2 given N1 equals 2 is geometric. Geometric with P equals E to the negative 2. This right here, this whole piece, this whole piece is the expected value. Right? So look, I mean, this is the expected value. This is the expected value of N2 given N1, which is geometric with that P. But you know, you should know what the um, expected values of a geometric sum. It's always a geometric uh, distribution. It's 1 over P. This is only if the number really can't, the random variable is the number of uh, trials until the first success. What is P? It's that. So this is 1 over e to the negative 2. So this is e to the 2. Well, that's, that's done then. The problem's done. But let me show you what to do if you didn't recognize that. I mean, you, ne you, might, you never know. I mean, a lot of this stuff so, is about, that's your answer, but a lot of this stuff is about pattern recognition. What if you don't recognize that? What do you do? What the hell do you do if you don't recognize that? And to be honest, the first time I did this problem, okay, um, and I am honest. I mean, I've told... For those of you who watch my videos, you know that I say when I, I did something wrong, like I got a problem wrong the first time, and when I, and, and, uh, I admit to that, right? This one I did get right the first time. But the first time I did it, I did not recognize it as geometric. So what the hell do you do? You do this. Let me show you. This is equal to e to the negative 2 times the sum from n2 uh, equals 1 to infinity of n2 1 minus e to the negative 2 n2 minus 1. This is what you have to recognize here. If you didn't recognize that it's geometric distribution before, you need to recognize this. This right here looks like the derivative. Looks like the derivative. This looks like looks like um, d dx of x to the n equals n x to the n minus 1. I'm going to make a video to show you uh, what I'm about to do, why it's true. But this looks like the power rule, right? If I sort of think of this as a variable, if I take the power rule, right, then I bring uh, the n2 down, I subtract one from the exponent. Okay, well, I claim that this always converges uh, to the same thing. Let me show you what it is. Okay, so well, I'll just leave that, I guess. All right. What does that converge to? Okay, again, I'll, I'll tag a video for showing why this is true, but this is equal to e to the negative 2, the sum, n2 equals 1 to infinity, of 1, uh, sorry, I'm actually evaluating the sum. This is almost the same thing as for a regular geometric sum, except for, for the derivative, the difference is this. Okay, it's still the first term, the first, why don't I plug in 1? I get I get zero. Uh, I get uh, n. I get n two, right? Um, uh, but really, but really, and I'll have to again. I'll have to prove this, but it's it's really going to be um, the first term. You sort of. Oh yeah, this is just one. Yeah, so it's the first term, which is one over one minus the common ratio. One minus the common ratio squared. That's the only difference. Now simplify this. This is equal to e to the negative 2, 1 minus, 1 minus this. This is um, e to the negative 4, because it raises the 2 power. So this again, use properties of exponents, negative 2 minus negative 4 is e squared. And that's my answer. So I need to justify this, and I want to make a video about that real quick uh, to show you why. So um, tell me what you think. I hope it was helpful, and uh, thank you, Joe, for asking the question. Always feel free to ask me questions to go over. I'm happy to do it. I enjoy it. Thank you.